Hi, I'm Delaney, and I work at Quantopian, and I'm here at QuantCon 2018 in New York, and one of the things that I'm doing today is tracking down smart people who have interesting things to say and dragging them in front of a camera, and the, uh, the current one that I foolishly convinced to, to sit in front of here was, was uh, uh, Tom Stark, so welcome, Tom. Um, Tom and I go uh, way back now through uh, some of the early work that we did with education in, in Sydney, um, and I remember my first discussion with Tom was uh, I think something about how you can use like quantum computers to do certain types of optimizations in finance, and I think we like took both opposite sides in that argument. And uh, since then, I knew it was probably going to be a, a a good person to to keep in mind for this kind of stuff. So um, if you want to give like a quick background on yourself, um, that would be awesome. Hi, um, so I'm Tom Stark. Um, I'm CEO of AAA Quants, which is my own consultancy company. Um, thanks for having me here at QuantCon. Thanks for having me present. Uh, so in my general work, um, I'm consulting to a lot of um, financial industry uh, companies, um, prop trading firms, um, hedge funds, and so on, and setting them up with uh, automated trading systems and quant strategies and so on. And at the, here at uh, QuantCon, I've been speaking about some experiments that I've been doing with reinforcement learning. Yeah, so I'm actually really curious about that. So can you give like maybe like a very quick overview of like what it is you've been working on? So um, reinforcement learning really uh, got quite um, popular with the AlphaGo beating the uh, Go world right. champion. And so I was naturally interested and I thought, oh, how can you use this for finance? And so, you know, I spent some time setting up a little system for myself uh, to see whether I can build it, which turned out to be quite manageable. It's it's with the current tools. Uh, it, you, you don't really have out-of-the-box solutions yet, but you can still set it up. And then um, I just basically started really simply and, and just, just start running it uh, over some price series and then added some features to it, uh, tried different types of neural networks, LSTMs and... and also, um, some other machine learning tools like SVMs mm -hmm. uh, to see whether I can ac actually get any results or anything interesting happening. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty, pretty enlightening. And like, obviously, the, the canonical problem with these type of methods is is overfitting. So is that something like that you've taken steps to deal with already? Is that something you anticipate having to deal with here? Mm, in fact, um, overfitting in in this sense isn't really happening because. The way I set it up is each individual trade is like a game. So, so you probably heard of the fact that they use um, reinforcement learning uh, to play computer games really mm -hmm. well. Um, and so what I did was I let the machine uh, play or, or use a trade as an individual game and then run it uh, through the time series trade by trade and it learns as it goes along mm -hmm. and so it keeps adapting to the time series um, bit by bit and, and you see at the beginning generally uh, it, it doesn't do very well and then it just keeps learning the game mm -hmm. and gets better and better at it um, and you know finally it gets really good but obviously uh, what works really well in some circumstances in financial time series is not that simple. Sure. So, you know, the, the holy grail of trading where you have a machine just coming up with the trading strategy by itself and running it and you don't have to do anything, unfortunately, is not quite there yet. Right. So, I mean, that's something that's pretty common in other forms of machine learning is this notion of like the, the half human, half machine hybrid and that you know, performing better at the end of the day. So it's like, is that what you mean by that? Like, do you still feel like there needs to be a certain layer of human expertise as part of the process? You know, like, why can't you fully automate it? Mm. So, so I mean, it's it's actually you you can automate it, but um, I would I would rather say there's a difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So, so the really interesting thing with reinforcement learning is it's in a sense unsupervised. Mm. You, you don't you don't tell it anything. It it just takes an action and it gets a reward for that action. Mm -hmm. So it takes a trade, take, plays a game, and gets a reward. So it gets a score for that. And so there's, there's issues with that because it actually has to learn the game. And if the game becomes more complex, it takes longer and longer. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing is with even um, games like AlphaGo or, or so, they are very um, 
they're very clean. You know, right. they have a set of rules that doesn't change. It's like perfect information in many yeah. cases. Everything is everything is really set and, 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 and structured. Whereas financial time series is basically very little signal and a lot of noise. Right. And and this is in fact when those machines really still struggle quite a bit. Right. Um, so since it learns by itself, it doesn't actually really understand the difference between noise and signal. Mm -hmm. And and that is definitely uh, still a problem right. uh, for this type of approach. Right. Um, however, there, there are ways to uh, mitigate that or there are ways to, to look I into this, maybe looking more at geometrical patterns in the... Um, in the time series. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, one of the things I've done was I just took a five period moving average. So, mm -hmm. so I had like my, my time series just, just took a moving average five periods, which smooths the series a little bit. And suddenly you go from quite unpredictable erratic returns to a really, really strong um, predictive or model. So, so you actually suddenly once you smooth it a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the reinforcement machine can actually trade it really well. Hmm. So to me, that that says or that, that gives me some hope that as you have more samples, for example, uh, you can actually um, you can actually really learn uh, to distinguish between the noise and the signal properly. Yeah, that makes sense. And mm -hmm. if you were to give maybe like one quick piece of advice to someone who, you know, was had not yet jumped into applying any kind of ML or AI to finance, um, but wanted to, um, like what would be your quick piece of advice around like, you know, maybe what they should do and they shouldn't do based on what you've learned? That's a good question. Um, so I think if you, if you think about using um, AI for finance, um, just be really aware it's, it seems like a good idea uh, right. because it really it really works well for stuff like face recognition and, and, and voice recognition and all this. But finance is a very different problem um, because it, first of all, um, has a lot of noise. And secondly, mm -hmm. as you apply it, the market, cha you change the market. You don't change a face by applying uh, right. uh, 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 face non recognition. Non-stationarity issues. Yes. So... so um, as you apply it, the, the piece of advice I give is like, be really careful what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And I think just to predict proper time series, just to do it for real hardcore prediction it is probably not the right tool to do that. However, um, for small aspects of trading, it could actually be really, really useful. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, weighting um, different factors in a multi-factor model and figure, and instead of just weighting them with some linear function, you could use machine learning and some nonlinear relationships between the factors to make your factor model more efficient. Sure. So I think that would be a, an interesting use for machine learning. But I would say just, you know, if you want to apply it, apply it first of all to some small aspects, not just to trading per se. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Well, I want to say thank you very much for, for sitting down. And thank you, Delaney. Thank you for coming to QuantCon. Um, and uh, for anybody who's watching this video, um, there will be a lot more material that we'll be posting. Um, and uh, I believe your talk today will be recorded, right? Um, I think so, So yes. that should be available mm -hmm. as well as part of the, uh, the QuantCon replay package that we'll be offering later. So if you actually want to kind of dig into some of the stuff that, that Thomas talked about, that's available. And do you want to plug your, your uh, what is it, uh, AAA Quants uh, firm? Like, is there a place people can go to find out about that? Oh, yeah, it's just AAAQuants.com. So it's pretty That's easy. Triple yep. A Quants. <laughs> Triple A Quants. Sounds That's good. Right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks, Delaney.